Hello, my name is Mr. Chipman. I am the IEP biology teacher at Murray High School in Murray, Kentucky, and I have been working through the FRQ questions from the 2023 AP Bio Exam Administration, and I have posted videos for one, two, three, four, five, and so this is the sixth and final question that we'll be looking at together. And to be a short question, it's quite a bit of text, and so we're going to read through this together. If you have been enjoying these videos, please help me out by liking this video, uh, commenting down below if you have some critique or if you were just enjoyed it or you were encouraged by it or you learned something. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Also check out my other um, videos. I have a zoology class uploaded onto my channel, an anatomy and physiology class, an honors biology class. So there's quite a bit going on here. Um, appreciate you sticking around to watch this video. So let's look at question six. Housekeeping genes encode proteins involved in universally important processes such as transcription, translation, and glycolysis. Uh, because these genes appear to be expressed in all cells at constant levels, the expression of housekeeping genes is also often used to as a control when comparing how the genes expression in other genes varies for under different conditions. Researchers studying the effects of pesticides on declining tree on bee populations wanted to determine whether the expression of those four genes there was in fact constant in bees across different variables. The researchers collected samples of mRNA from, uh, for each of the four genes and compared how their expression varied across the de developmental stage for B of the, of the bee, the sex of the bee, and the cell type from which it was taken. The mRNA of the samples was re reverse transcribed to produce DNA copies of each gene. PCR was then used to amplify the DNA and the CQ value was determined. So that's the y-axis there, okay? So to be measured, what is the CQ value? CQ value is the number of PCR cycles needed to produce a specified number of DNA copies. A high CQ value for a sample indicates that the gene expression was at a low level. Okay, so uh, that is so common on the AP exam where something high means something low. It's just a, just a way to make things confusing. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a little arrow. And uh, if I attempt to write the word low on here, it's going to look disgusting. But we're going to do it anyway. I'm doing this with a mouse. That's uh, not too bad. Six out of ten. Uh, and what, this, what that's reminding me is that as I go up the y-axis, that um, gene expression is low. All right, I'm not going to remember what low is. I may have to go look at this last sentence. I could even come up here and underline this just to help me. But that is probably going to factor into the questions, is my guess. To analyze whether any of the examined variables affect the expression of housekeeping genes, researchers examine the range of CQ values for each gene in response to each variable. The genes with a wide range of CQ values were determined to be affected by the variable, while the genes with a narrow range of CQ values were determined to be unaffected by the variable. Okay. All right. Not too bad. Let's go look at the questions. Based on the data in figure one, identify the gene with the lowest median CQ value when the bees um, developmental stages were compared. Um, is this a trick question? It's literally asking you for the lowest uh, value. So uh, you have to know what these little things are, I guess. And um, these are called box and whisker plots. And the little medium, the middle line is, is the median. That's pretty much all you need to know. RPS5 is the lowest since it's an identifier. Uh, you do not need to walk them through how you came about that. And so if it was me, I would write RPS5 is the uh, gene that has the lowest median CQ value. Uh, part B. CQ value is inversely proportional to the amount of mRNA from the gene in the starting sample. Based on the data in figure one, identify the gene with the lowest level of gene expression regardless of variable. Again, look at here. We've already told ourselves that Highest means low. Boop, there it is. Uh, identify again, TBP dash AF, whatever that is, has the lowest level of gene expression regardless of variable. 
This should have been an easy one. Hopefully it was. Uh, the scientist investigated the effect of pesticides on the expression of other genes in one cell type of group of bees containing male and females of the same developmental stage. Okay. So the cell type and the developmental stage is the same. The only difference is the sex. They hypothesized that TBPAF would serve as the best control. Let's look and see why. Um, okay. Notice how these three are all grouped together. And so there may be some difficulty uh, distinguishing them because they're, they're all the same. Whereas TBPAF doesn't um, over, you know, its error bars do not overlap with these other three. And so that's what I would say. Uh, so their hypothesis, that would be good. I would evaluate their hypothesis. Their hypothesis is sound because TBPAF is a significantly different has a significantly different CQ value than the other three genes that are being measured and that would be my final answer there um, hopefully that makes sense this one's um really graph heavy no content really at all up to this point uh, part D explain how this is content Explain how the expression of a gene, such as GAPDH, can vary from one cell to another within the same bee. I don't even have to look at that. I don't even have to go up here and look at GAD, whatever. They're going to want you to do that, but don't. Um, part D, how is that? Because cells are different. Because a multicellular organism um, is going to have different kinds of cells, and the different uh, functions of those cells are going to require different levels of proteins. And so you would expect that uh, where there is cell differentiation, you're going to have differentiation of genetic expression. And that would be my final answer because uh, the amount of proteins in one cell from that gene is going to be different than another simply because of the needs of that particular cell. Okay, that is all of them. Question six is over. That one wasn't too bad either. Hopefully you guys did well on this exam. I've heard a lot of things that people said the FRQs were difficult. Um, but I didn't see anything that, aside from maybe the cyclic uh, the cyclic F, um, cycle or whatever, of the photo photosynthesis, you know, I didn't really cover that in class, but I don't think it was necessary. Just based on deduction, you could, you could have figured that out. I didn't see anything that just completely flew off at me as like, I can't believe they they asked that question. The, the only vague, completely vague question was the percent change question that I talked about in a previous video. But hopefully this wasn't too bad. Hopefully you have good scores. Um, tell me when your scores came out, how you did. I'd love to hear how you did on this. And uh, again, thank you for taking the time to watch these videos. Thank you.